you lived in New York, right, Chris? I did. Exactly how far out of New York do you have to drive before you're on the Pacific Coast Highway? <laughs> <on> <laughs> cliffs? Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. Hey everybody, welcome to the Sincast. Uh, this is Chris Agnes from Cinema Sins, joined as always by the voice of Cinema Sins, Jeremy Scott. Howdy, howdy. And from Music Video Sins, Bear Share. Mini Pod! Mini Pod, Strange Pod. You guys, <laughs> you guys preempted my Mini Pod mention, <laughs> oh, and no. you just fucking said it out of nowhere. I'm, I'm so sorry. Excited. You fucked it up. I only did it because he did it. Barrett's really the, he was the first guy. I just prematurely ejaculated. Emoted. <laughs> <laughs> you prematurely ejaculated. Anyway, this is a mini pod. Mini pod. There we go. Um, of Doctor Strange, a movie that made about ninety million dollars over the weekend. That's kind of a lot. Yeah, it is kind of a lot, actually. Um, so ultimately, what do we think about this movie? Anybody want to take it away? I liked it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's. I mean, I didn't love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably my third or fourth favorite Marvel movie. Oh, I really? had so much fun watching this movie. It's very funny. There's a lot of humor. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got plenty of lists of things I didn't like about it. Uh, but I liked it. Yeah. Uh, I like this, too. Um, it was it was uh, strange that I did <laughs> like it. Um, but uh, it's very brisk. Like, it is. Like, normally, uh, you know, uh, sort of one of these type of origin story type movies it takes like 20 or 30 extra minutes of whatever but what's kind of good about this character is that he uh is so smart and has that unbelievable memory and yeah. everything that a lot of the stuff that takes forever in these origin stories he was just able to read some stuff and you yeah. know whatever now you lose a little bit in the translation too because he's like all of a sudden doing all this stuff. I actually wrote that down. This is one of the first origin stories I could have stood to have more yeah. of the training and learning. It totally goes agree. by really quick. Yeah. I mean, the movie is an hour and 55 minutes, which I don't know if that's some sort of speed record for these Marvel movies because they all like seem to clock in at 220 now. Yeah. Uh, but this one, I was like sitting there going, man, this actually feels like the end of the movie yeah. when I was getting to the end of it. And yeah. I was like, well, I might get out of here at a decent time. <laughs> you know? Um, well, it's got... It's not competing with all those other franchises that have all this baggage. Like, you know, obviously the the Avengers and Captain America and all this stuff just gets progressively darker and darker and darker. Even Iron Man. This is kind of, in my mind, similar to the first Iron Man. Oh, very much. Um, where it's almost too similar at times. Like billionaire genius uh, yep. playboy type of thing but oh no he crashed his lamborghini <laughs> you know, yeah. while he was pulling up mri yeah, while he was really. texting and driving yeah exactly but yeah no it's is it the second best marvel movie this year what would be the first deadpool, deadpool? yeah so deadpool the x-men civil but war even though I, Deadpool's I, not in the mcu yeah they don't call uh, yeah i don't consider it a part of that yeah i'm just saying marvel movies over, over yeah they, then yes yeah because mm. deadpool going is that better way. than this mm. but yeah this is really, really fun. Yeah. That fucking cloak. <laughs> yeah. It has like magic carpet from Aladdin type personality, uh -huh. right? And and maybe you could even, if you, if you hate this movie, you're going to say it's ripping that off. But that moment when it grabs that henchman and hits his head on the floor like 32 goddamn times in a row. <laughs> yeah. and he just does not stop bashing that guy's head <laughs> yeah. on the floor. And I was dying laughing. Yeah. And it even like, you know, tries to, uh, you know, fix him up there at the end yeah, where he puts it on and wipes it off and everything you know it's like <laughs> um and yeah i mean it's very simple story to me like even though there's a lot of like you know multiverse type stuff going yeah. on in this and everything uh you know i thought it was pretty simple to understand overall what they're doing yeah. you know oh uh the avengers uh, they do the physical realm we do the mystical realm whatever and uh we have to protect these three whatever they they called them sanctums sanctums in the movie which made uh, me think of sky high and kurt russell saying sanctum now <laughs> <laughs> and uh and so there's a lot of stuff there and, and now I, and one i guess one thing that I, I worry about with something like you when you introduce something like doctor strange and it is like all this magic and stuff like that like like yeah okay i get that the avengers are protecting the physical realm and you're protecting the spiritual realm and all that but can't you do both well, and the end credit scene is bringing those two realms together. Yeah. yeah. And so 
This is my great concern, and it has been ever since Thanos was hinted at, is that when you when you start bringing gods and magic into the superhero realm, I start to lose interest, mm-hmm. right? Iron Man's missiles are not going to stop Thanos. Captain America's fists are not going to stop Thanos. And this is why we have Vision, and now we have Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch, because now we have good guy magic slash gods yeah. that can fight the bad guy gods. And I just kind of want to find power so that I know, like, I'm really worried these Infinity War movies are going to be so, like, what the fuck is she doing? Well, I didn't exactly. know they had that power. Yeah, what are the what are the limits on the power? This is the problem that X-Men Apocalypse had. Yeah. It's like, you are able to do this in this scene, but we're completely throwing that out the window. And especially... One of my big issues that I had with this movie is that they spend a lot of time still punching each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, can we not get past the punching? It's in almost a movie for like a little this? bit there. It's like magic will help you make weapons on the fly and then fight. Yeah, right. That's yeah. basically what it is for a while until he's at least until it's, he starts getting that time thing down. Yeah, I, I didn't know really what to think. Uh, uh, you know, during that whole thing where it was both their astral projections were fighting through the hospital. Exactly. Basically, yeah. yeah, it was a lot of just like. It felt like this is a cheap scene we can get away with here because mm-hmm. it's, oh, it's their astral projections fighting each other. But we don't know really what damage they're inflicting. I guess that's real damage. But I, I mean, it's just it, I don't really know yeah. what the stakes are when it comes to them fighting that way. Like, why is that more? You know, does that why does that sway the why does that sway the fight any more than just regular physical? Yeah, because they're just going to be punching each other in the face in perpetuity. If yeah, this, if this keeps going, if it right. Didn't I did really like that first fight Doctor Strange has with the bad guy whose name I can't pronounce. It starts with a K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where he's not fully trained yet, and he's kind of accidentally facing the main bad guy of the movie and he has to sort of figure out what to do on the fly very much reminded me of the iron man movie yeah. right where tony's got to figure out exactly what combination of this suit skills will help him win this fight uh i thought i thought that sequence was thrilling yeah absolutely and then i do have a question though about those doors where it's like doors to other places and you turn the orange knob to change the place don't mm-hmm. they have that circle spell that's a portal to anywhere you want to go that orange fire circle spell where you make this spell and walk through it isn't, and now you're on Everest. Isn't that the sanctum, though? The sanctum, you can't do that or something like oh, that? Really? No, but he does. He gets out of the sanctum to get into the hospital. I was just curious. I no, I, I agree. I think it's just like an easy entrance, I guess. Okay. Instead of having, if you don't have your sling ring on you, <laughs> you can just walk through the door there you go. or get okay. pushed through the door. That makes sense. This uh, And now, uh, obviously, we have to say that there's spoilers in this. Miss Luke's what? father is actually Darth Vader. She's, She's the sister and the She's daughter. What? They just no, 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 no. I'm reading the books. This movie has an, a fantastic Edge of Tomorrow type of scene in it. Oh my god! Where he, where Doctor Strange is going up against that big bad guy, yep. or whatever, at the end, and like he keeps on going, "I'd like to be, I'd like to uh, negotiate uh, a deal." <laughs> and you can't bargain. You can't a bargain. <laughs> and like, uh, and then the guy keeps on like smashing him, but then he keeps coming back. I'm here to bargain, <laughs> and it's just very. I love stuff like that. It's oh, so, it's so great. refreshing. Yeah, it's not a finale that devolves into him punching the guy god in the face yeah, yeah. he's right. actually using his brain to get out of this which is his most important attribute well, i loved it for once we have a marvel movie that's ending with the destruction being undone mm-hmm. instead yeah. of being done right? yeah um i thought that was a super clever oh, i was laughing heartily when he just kept showing up i've come to bargain i've yeah. come to bargain mm-hmm. like he's not he's stubborn and if this thing has like the mind of a five-year-old so it takes him a really long time to figure out what's going on um, I thought it was great. The ending was really, really great way to end that movie. Yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch is, this is probably my favorite thing that I've seen him in. A- a- aside from Sherlock, obviously mm-hmm. you can't really touch that, but, um, but almost everything that he's been in, like even the imitation game and stuff, he's great in the imitation game, but this is one where he really gets to, I think, shine more oh, yeah. than anything you get and it's kind of got that dr house sensibility to him it has everything. a very it, his accent is very dr house mm-hmm. yeah uh, you know another brit playing you know an american and there's some times where he really goes hard on those r's yeah to make sure that he i was gonna ask them. you about the accent because i went online and it seems like everybody thought his american accent was on point and i thought it was pretty good but i, I swear i heard that british a few times like when he was talking Asian. about his work like he didn't say work like an American. He was like, my work. 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. just had a little bit of the hint of that British. But I thought he was fantastic. I was super impressed with Tilda Swinton in this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thought she was really engaging. Um, and especially her her death scene, if you will. I thought that was a really cool... I yeah. like that whole scene where their two astral projections are out. And she's just at the slowing world. down time just yeah. so that she can enjoy this one more time yeah. before she dies. Yeah. It's great. It's um, interesting that she ended up being an integral part of the movie and actually like a good part because she got so much backlash when did. this was initially, you know, announced. Well, it's it, supposed to be an Asian dude. Yeah. And they made it a Celtic woman. Um, and if I guess if you do that then it's not technically whitewashing because we've changed the character <laughs> to somebody that would be white um again i never read a single doctor strange comic i knew nothing about this guy going in so i'm not terribly offended by that um but you know at well, the same time if it's a woman it's vagina but washing. i mean <laughs> i mean no i don't think that's technically what they mean when they say whitewashing though they're talking about the original character it doesn't matter if you change it or not mm. it's if that character was supposed to be Asian and you changed it, you're whitewashed. Yeah, I agree. I um, agree. You know, I I don't know what the I don't I really don't know what the, the fix is. A lot of times, like Tilda Swinton is not exactly like a box office draw. Hmm. Like you can understand when, when they put Matt Damon and you know the Great Wall and all this yeah. other type of stuff. Like it's like who are we gonna get to like sell this movie to American <laughs> audiences? Or you know we can't get Chow Yun Fat anymore. I don't think. Or it's like. You know, like they, uh, that's whitewashing, but it's also like, I understand here. I don't know if I understand, even though she's great in it. She is great, but there are plenty of super talented old Asian men actors who could have done just as good. Mm. This movie has a super talented Asian actor. I made a note about, um, Benedict Wong. Yeah. He plays mm-hmm. Wong in this movie. He plays Bruce in The Martian. Yeah. And he's had mostly TV and small roles in other movies, but I think that's a guy to watch because he was super engaging and yeah. fun. Um, and I feel the same way about him in The Martian. Uh, he could have played the role of the Ancient One just fine. He's yeah. got talent, and he's standing right here in this movie. Well, and you could have done Getty Watanabe still. Yeah. You could have done a lot of these. You know, I mean, it's I don't I don't know why they continue to do this, especially in this case where you just like I said, Tilda Swinton is not like going to bring you two hundred million dollars. Right? She's she definitely is. Uh, you know, a great actress and everything. She can do anything that you've put in front of her, but you're not going to exactly like draw in people. That's why I always think things are whitewashed is for that it's reason. for that reason, yeah. Like, and so that's why it doesn't make much sense. If it had been Angelina case. Jolie, maybe you could have argued they thought that would be a big draw or something. <laughs> yeah. Because you know? yeah. she's a, be a, more, a bigger name right. actress. Let's talk about another actress in this movie, Rachel McAdams. Mm-hmm. Waste it. Yep. Yeah. Waste it. Totally. Absolutely. Just like... Natalie well, Portman in the Thor movies. Sort of like where they, and here where they're like, well, she's a doctor, so therefore she's not wasted. Like, no, no, you you're still, still you're her. still, you're still the hot girl and you're still the, you're just a romantic interest. I'll give you half want. a point for not putting her in distress like Mary Jane at the end of the film. Mm-hmm. I'll give you that. Yeah. But she's a better actress than this movie cares to deal with. This movie just needed a hot doctor girlfriend And they cast her. And Mm. I wish they would have cast some unknown. Uh, I just hate when talent is wasted. And I feel like she's a really good actress. There's only one part that I thought that she was really good in. And it's the reaction to all the magical shit that's happening around her. Yeah. (laughs) And that was just like a nice bit of levity, especially after like this big battle and everything. And she's just accepting all this shit like... This is your astral fucking projection. Then she sees the cape and just like, what the hell's going on? But that leads the to the broom falls and all that stuff. That was good. That was funny. That, but that leads me to the weird thing that happens after she sees this astral projection and all this other type of stuff. She's suddenly Scully in this movie where she's just like, you know, oh, you you, you think you can do all these things or what? She's like very skeptical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, did you not fucking see the astral project? <laughs> do you not have any questions about that? You're just now a scully to this whole thing? There's no time for explanations there. Yeah. Um, this is one of the first uh, Michael Giacchino scores that I was a little underwhelmed by. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? I heard his Star Trek music all through this movie. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I don't think it was a bad score, but there were three or four beats where I was like, I think that's from Star Trek. And I, I I always have such high hopes with him because he hits so many home runs. And I just read yesterday he's scoring the Spider-Man Homecoming movie, which mm. makes me very excited that we're going to get a kick-ass Spider-Man theme. And this music fits this movie just fine. I just I was a little surprised that I heard so much of his previous work in it. I do wonder, though, with these kind of composers, because I don't think 
the, when he first came up, it, he was doing mainly stuff like Lost and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. And he didn't have very many film scores, so he was able to dedicate a lot of his time to these different types of things. Now, I think he's just such an on-demand composer that, much like Thomas Newman and mm-hmm. James Horner and all these guys, they eventually just say, you know what, this <laughs> thing that I this thing that I wrote for Star Trek that didn't get in the movie, I'm going to put that in Doctor Strange. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just what, I mean, and unfortunately, that's what, ha- I think that's what happens a lot of times. Because it's right. like... I just I can't I can't write new stuff for every single thing. I know you need me and everything, but you know, I all right, here we go. No, you borrow, I mean, you hear that stuff in Mozart, obviously, and like Beethoven and Brahms was a big uh Dvorak was a big guy. This, they would repeat themes, they would revisit themes from their previous works and everything. Obviously it's a kind of an awkward comparison, but I think you're right. After you get to this point, you're gonna have a little bit of repetition or Sometimes it's repetition, but also it's kind of a signature. I thought this was actually a fun score. I thought the theme was a recognizable theme uh, for Doctor Strange. So I, eh, I kind of like it. I mean, I yeah, I thought it worked for that character. Um, it's not even the main theme that I took an issue with. There were just other moments where... And then there was that... There's a very Matrixy feeling portion of this movie for about 15 minutes where she's explaining all of this shit to him and showing it to him. Mm-hmm. Much like the scene when Morpheus and Neo are in that white background watching yeah. the TV and Morpheus is explaining everything to him. And I even heard Matrix score type horns huh. as it started to get a little dramatic in her telling. And I, and I was like, you know, that's awesome. I don't have any problem with that at all because I love the Matrix. But um, anyway, what else? I like uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor in this yeah. a lot, too. And he's always been like a great go to actor and everything. Um, I mean, he's been in a million things. Uh, but uh, his character arc in this is very, very cool. I think, yeah. like he is a no, he's nothing but good mm-hmm. this entire movie. But once he finds out that the Tilda Swinton was breaking some laws yeah. and stuff, he just decides, you know what? Too many sorcerers in this, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. yeah. and that it sets him up pretty nicely for future movies. It does well, and he, I think, is a famous antagonist for Doctor Strange in the comics, mm-hmm. from what I've read. Mm-hmm. Um. You lived in New York, right, Chris? I did. Exactly how far out of New York do you have to drive before you're on the Pacific Coast Highway? <laughs> <on Cliffs? laughs> About 3,000 miles. Well, within sight of the Brooklyn Bridge, too, right? I mean, what the hell was that? <laughs> yeah. I know you, you, can you not have a car crash without there being a cliff and a mountain? I yeah. mean, where was he going? Some benefit? Yeah. It was funny. Like, I had this basic instinct vibe while he was driving through all that. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there like, you know, sure enough, Sharon Stone's going to show up. and He's like going to the <laughs> Shining Hotel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. It's one of those funny, weird things that you don't even think about a lot of times. It's just like, yeah. oh, they were in New York. Oh, now he's on a cliff. Whatever. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems right. It seems okay. It's like kind of like what uh, Seven does with their city, where it's like it feels like New York, it but it and it doesn't really. It, L.A. kind of fits, but then they're suddenly driving somewhere and they're out in a desert yeah you know like where is the city yeah. that they're in you know like well, i think that movie famously doesn't ever tell you yeah yeah it's yeah. supposed to be in every city type of thing but this one's new york it's it's absolutely new york <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i can see the avengers tower in the skyline shops yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so i was just a little bit perplexed by that well um, speaking of new york one of the one of my favorite scenes was that uh fight chase scene in new york where it's got that inception thing where yeah everything's, more the you know, visuals in this down. movie are fucking outstanding isn't it ilm yeah it is ILM. Yeah, man. um oh, it's this great. is one of the most visually stunning movies i've ever seen mm. ever uh the way they did that action with the buildings moving now i have a couple questions about the function of that mm. because there's times where they spin it to change gravity so that they start falling off of the street into a building or what have you. Or mm-hmm. there's a time where she rolls a building up and crushes some dudes in it. Why don't they do that all the time? Why don't they yeah. just spin that shit clockwise super fast so everybody's in a dryer? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't understand uh, that. Although I guess, you know, their explanation will end up being something like, well, you can't do that too much because, you know, like the real world will be affected in some way. You oh, know? Yeah. Well, yeah, well, because but you're right. out like that. But you're right. They should be able to just do whatever they want. I mean, they're bending time and space and multiverses and all that other type of exactly. stuff at will. So that shouldn't really be a problem. 
Um, I did like how they, they explained that away by putting it in the mirror dimension. Like, this is where we fight and train and imprison folks so it doesn't affect the real world. Mm-hmm. You know? I yeah, am pretty cool. nervous about this multiverse concept mm-hmm. and what, what they're going to do with that. Like, to break, this movie is basically saying there are infinite universes, parallel universes going on all around us, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like that every decision you make forms a new universe. I feel like they're going to I feel like they're going to go, well, this is the Iron Man from a different universe yeah. and here's his yeah. story. That's what it's opening up the it open makes me really nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Although the MCM. if something weird happens like on that episode of Star Trek the Next Generation where there's like a thousand Iron Mans in one spot, that mm-hmm. could be kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. But uh I was a little bit nervous when they started bringing that up. Well, and all the, you know, the confusion that we have during these, you know, scenes about what they can do and what they can't do and all that is continued by the the usual uh editing of these action scenes because they keep they're they're gonna keep doing this i know that 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 you'll never get anybody who's gonna make these action scenes coherent i watched this movie knowing this in mind and i have for a while and usually it really bothers me this time it kind of bothered me not as much as usual i guess but yeah they still do this this cutting uh of the action scenes that just make takes me out of it a lot of times and so you have to figure out what's going on Hard to hard to figure out a lot of times. You know what takes me out of it? Stan Lee cameos. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and now, when I say it takes me out of it, that does not mean that I was so in it, I thought what I was watching was real. <laughs> it just means I'm into the story, then you pull me out of it for a moment to say, look, it's the creator of Marvel, real life human being Stan Lee. Yeah. <laughs> now back to the movie, and I can't get right back in like that. Yeah. And it, I... I respect Stanley. Well, it would be the same thing if it was just any other person that they were. Yeah, if it was Sean to. Connery. Yeah, or just any extra. That's the thing about any sort of like uh, summer movies have this thing. I've talked about it before, where they're like, it, because it's some big event and everything, they always have to throw some scene in there with like normal people who aren't like the main characters yeah. or whatever. So you always see these scenes where they're like on the interstate and there's somebody driving along and the big monster shows up yeah. and all the family's like, oh, yeah. and it's all comic takes me out of the movie yeah. every single time. It's the same way with these Stan Lee cameos. I wish they could just do it where he's just sort of in the background or something and like, you know. And it's just, uh, he's in the movie, but he doesn't have some stupid, like, ha that's funny yeah, yeah. line, you know? I yeah. mean, I don't think they knew when they started giving him cameos that it was going to turn into this every single movie thing. But I, I've ranted about this before in other videos and podcasts, but you don't see other creators sticking themselves in every single thing that is an, you don't see Stephen King in every single Stephen King adaptation. <laughs> no, just <laughs> you. No. no, you don't. And so, again... Just to clarify, I think Stanley is awesome. I'm glad he created Marvel with the help of other people who no longer get credit. Uh, I'm glad that he's a cool guy. He's a shitty actor, and it pulls me out of every Marvel movie <laughs> when you put that cameo in there. I uh, I think also that there's going to have to be something with this Michael Stuhlbarg character that's in here, too, who plays the Dr. Nicodemus West or whatever his name is, the quote-unquote rival doctor that's in this he's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he's yeah. he's uh he's been in a lot of stuff michael stuhlbarg like boardwalk empire and uh, uh a um a serious man is one of his big uh, roles and everything but uh i don't know if nicodemus west is a is a future villain or or team guy or whatever but when you put somebody like that in there you kind of wonder if that's what where they're going with yeah, him mm-hmm. at some point. same thing with benjamin bratt and his character and yeah everything. I was surprised to see such a big name in that in that role. Yeah, you know, they're obviously going to come back to him at some point. You would think. Yeah, um, yeah. Which you know, I don't know if you guys stayed around for the other scenes and everything. I didn't, but I read about it. Yeah, the uh, the you know he she would tell Edge before shows up and and re cripples Benjamin Bratt basically mm-hmm. and says there's too many sorcerers and all that. So I'm sure that'll be a thing. You know, you don't see enough re cripplings in movies. No, no, no. you don't. Uh, I actually, he's got a point. Like, why Why would you go all the way over there, get your shit, and then come back home and play pickup basketball? Yeah. You know? yeah. And why would they allow that to happen? Yeah. You know all the mysteries of the universe now, but you're cool, man. Just go yeah. back. You're all good. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Don't tell anybody right, except yeah. for Doctor Strange. Well, yeah. and, and the other thing about this is that are they allowed to tell everybody? Because sometimes they're running down the middle of the street 
not in the mirror yeah, universe. Now, we don't have the same kind of like Harry Potter explanation here no, about with no. like muggles and stuff like that, which is basically what this is. Like yeah. all the people in the background are muggles. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is like, like we don't get any explanation about like they see what they want to see or yeah. any of that. Or maybe it's just happening so fast they don't see it. Maybe that's what we're supposed to think, but <laughs> that was, we don't know. <laughs> that was the first thing when, uh, when Mads Mikkelsen was, was running down his you know, uh, guy liner people were wa- <laughs> running down the yeah, street at the beginning. Yeah. Like, people were looking at these folks running down yeah. the street in these weird costumes was, and everything. There was a couple of universe. extras who were definitely, like, making a point to turn and look at the camera <laughs> in one scene. Yeah. Like, they're like, huh? Camera? The- yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, like, he's going into the hospital and, you know, making himself known. The cape is right there and everything. So, it's like, where does that supposed to fit in? But mm-hmm. I don't think we got an explanation. I, think, I want to talk for a second about that time gizmo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I thought the visual way they showed how that worked was really cool. Mm-hmm. With the apple that's rotting and yeah. unrotting. And there's like, there's no dialogue there. He's just kind of, oh, go this way. Does mm-hmm. this go this even further, huh? Yeah. And I really liked that. But I feel like this is a positive version of Kryptonite now. Mm-hmm. Because every movie forward with Doctor Strange... He's either going to fix everything by going back in time, or they're going to have to come up with some crazy explanation why that shit breaks and he can't use it. Yeah. Am or right? or they can just use the Prisoner of Azkaban thing and just yeah. forget all about it. No, oh, it's like his and main never weapon in the comics, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, uh, I mean, is that how he's going to win the Infinity War? Because that seems pretty easy to write. I can script that shit right now. Mm-hmm. By, by the way, this whole, like, you know, he the Mads Mikkelsen comes in and rips the two pages out of the book when yeah. he could just steal the book. I'm getting really tired of this in movies, by the way. This is another one that does it. Like, you know, there was really no pur- purpose in tearing the page out in uh, in Angels and Demons. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're committing a crime and you're not getting searched, there's no reason not to just take that whole book with you. Said, let's deface this property. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. like in this one, yeah, who cares? They're bad guys. They, they got the pages they need, but... Why? Why tear pages yeah, out? It and it's a big sense. plot point. It is. It's a huge yeah. plot point. I mean, uh, like, what are you doing? Um. So yeah, but uh, yeah, you're right. You could write Infinity War with all this. Like, uh, Doctor yeah. Strange shows up, turns back time, everything's yeah, fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's do this again. Yeah, we're gonna just have this like you know Galaxy Quest thing happen in every movie now. It's like, funny that I I read after I saw the movie how big a deal that weapon is in the comics for Doctor Strange. But when I'm watching the movie, I'm like, Omega Thirteen. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> That's convenient. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. They're going to have to... De- I, th- I feel like they're definitely going to have to set some guidelines for that power at some point, because... Or or just have him lose the amulet or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's well, that, the movie too. Says it's, it's an a- Infinity Stone, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I'm sure something with the Infinity War will probably take that stone out of his gizmo, and then he'll just have to use orange swords that he conjures on the fly. Mm-hmm. I've lost track. How many Infinity Stones are there 67. now? 67. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yep, sixty-seven of them. There, 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 there's been Easter eggs of the Infinity Stones all the way throughout yeah, Marvel, yeah, yeah. Marvel movies. Doesn't <laughs> the glove that Thanos has doesn't it have five spots for stones? Is that I think so. And then you've got the one in Guardians of the Galaxy. The Tesseract is one. This is one. Vision and has one in his brain. Vision has one in his his brain. So I don't know. I don't really care though. Yeah, I really don't. <laughs> Just you know, the MCU you away, to think. people. Yeah. So, all right. So ultimately, I think we actually like this movie, which mm. is uh, a, a different thing for a mini pod. So yeah. first, it's, <laughs> it's pretty rare. <laughs> it's only like, been one that we all like. So we've been able to like unanimously say, hey, not a bad time at the movies. There. Not at all. Uh, but uh, so that's kind of refreshing, right? It's great. So you were saying that it was your third or fourth favorite in the MCU yeah. What do you what do you think? Where does this rank? Um in the MCU. I liked this better than Civil War. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Right? I I think the Iron, no, first Iron Man is still my favorite. Mm-hmm. Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy. Although I am geeked about Guardians of the Galaxy 2. That trailer yeah. is so fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I was in a sold out theater and when Baby Groot pops around, all the girls mm-hmm. were like, "Oh, he's so cute." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Marvel, you goddamn genius. Yeah. <laughs> you got same. all the girlfriends <laughs> yep. on board already for this movie. Uh, the exact same baby reaction. Groot. You yes. are geniuses. Definitely. Um, I would probably put it around the same area as where Jeremy is. Uh, because when you when you talk about the MCU, I don't like Thor Dark World. I don't like really the first Captain America, even mm-hmm. though it's okay. It's solid. Mm-hmm. It, Captain America might be the middle ground for all of them. 
Um, I didn't really like Thor, even though that's more like middle ground too. Um, hated Iron Man two and Iron Man three. Yep. Um, Age of Ultron was Age shitty. of Ultron was not good. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I would you know it's like it's it would definitely be in that area somewhere. Iron Man is my favorite out of this group. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is up there, and I'd put this th- there, and then I'd probably put Avengers, the first Avengers, right after this. Yeah. Something like that. Even though Avengers is way bigger movie and scale and everything, I, I just, I like this. I'm just a little mo- Avengers still does have that bloated first hour bullshit that you have yeah. to get mm-hmm. Like, what makes Avengers so great is that is that backloaded second hour and the Joss Whedon humor mixed with the action. Um, but the whole thing is not great, in my opinion. Yeah, so, well, I mean, that's what sets this apart. From the other ones, it's not sloggy and it's nope. not burdened and it's funny. Yep. That whole scene where he's uh, going up to Wong and he's like, like uh, Drake, like Madonna, like Beyonce. Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, I mean Beyonce. Like, and then like he's hilarious. listening to Beyonce in the next scene. <laughs> well, when he yeah. first meets Mad Mickelson, that guy is like Mister Strange. He's like, it's Doctor. He's like Mister Doctor, <laughs> it's Strange. And the guy's like, I know, but who am I to judge? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it could be. <laughs> um. But yeah, and and I know a lot of people, like people listening, would probably put Winter Soldier very high, like mm-hmm. even number one still, and everything. I still am not that high on that movie. I don't know if I ever will be, but that um, and Civil War for me, I just accepted. I'm a litter grade below the public on those. Yeah. I don't hate them. They're just they're just bees for me. Yeah, I would put Winter Soldier just above the first Captain America, and Civil War would probably be in between those two, mm-hmm. and. You know, it's this way way it goes. I like them when they're a little bit more fun and light. Yeah, and yeah. I wrote this one. Doctor Strange was a B plus that flirts with an A minus. Yeah, yeah. That's perfect, actually. Yeah, I think so too. All right, so we like this movie, and Yay! Uh, Yay! so that'll be the mini pod for this week. Mini pod. Um, we are going to do a few more of these, uh, I believe. Yeah, uh, as we get into the holiday season, there's some some, some big heavy hitters that are coming up. So we want to. I can't tell you how bad I wanted to go into Hacksaw Ridge yesterday I instead know. of Doctor Strange. <laughs> I know, man. <laughs> there was a moment. Uh, there was some like a gathering of like six year olds outside the theater as I was walking in. And they were singing Can't Stop the Feeling. Oh, yeah. And uh, I walked by with my wife, and I was like, you think they're here for Hacksaw Ridge? <laughs> <laughs> yep. They're the, they're they're the Leslie Nielsen, Priscilla Presley crew <laughs> coming out of Platoon. Um, anyway, that'll be the mini pod for this week. It's Chris Atkins and Jeremy Scott and Barrett Share. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. And be sure to visit cinemasins.com. It's play that song, the one that makes me go all night. Oh, I have heard that one, yeah. The one that makes you think of me. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? (laughs) Everyone knows that song. And yet we have this blurred lines lawsuit where yeah, like yeah, a little Marvin shuffle Gates. thing yeah. is worth millions, yeah. but this guy can rip off an entire melody line or uh, the Sam Smith uh, lawsuit against Tom Petty. Yeah. Yeah. That or was the escape from L.A. lawsuit against that prison movie with Guy Pierce. That was uh, Luke Besson uh, made this space prison movie with Guy Pierce where he goes in to try and rescue the president's daughter yeah, yeah, and yeah. get out. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Carpenter uh, sued him. And said it was basically Escape from L.A., just in space. And he won. Did he really? Yeah. <laughs> there was something with, um, turn on your hot light. And it's so much the E.T. plot <laughs> that. The E.T. plot? Yes. Like the lyrical content the lyric is E.T. Con- <laughs> is very much E.T., even though they never mention him by name. <laughs> it's about a friendly alien? <laughs> uh, something like that. <laughs> And now these days we've just got people name dropping Michelle Pfeiffer and they're they don't have to pay her. Yeah, anymore. yeah, but I mean it's not a it's not Who's elements name dropping Michelle Pfeiffer. Two songs did last year, Riptide and um, Uptown Funk. But I mean it's not plot oh, el- yeah. it's not plot <laughs> elements of a movie though. I guess not. It's you just can just say somebody's name. So if he had just said the song, the chorus was E.T. Turn on your E.T. <laughs> I, see, this is what I don't get about that song is that if he don't say E.T. once. How can you sue successfully? Yeah, that's weird. I don't, I don't get that at all. But <laughs> our shit goes did 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 did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
name that is, is, the is seventh, they said that's the seventh largest gathering of human beings of all time. <laughs> I yeah. heard that. What yeah. are the top six? I uh I don't really buy that. Something Popey? Oh, there's a Rod Stewart got to be concert in Brazil that apparently had a lot of people. Of course, they're being serious. Yep. Oh, that's funny. So number one is some pilgrimage in India, thirty million people. Uh, some festival in Iraq, seventeen million. Funeral of C. N. Anna Durai. I don't know. Uh, fifteen million. That was in sixty nine. Funeral of Ayatollah Khomeini. Ooh, wow. In Iran, fifteen million. Papal gathering in the Philippines. Pope. Nice. I knew it. World Youth Day in 95. What? <laughs> That's a lot of youths. Yeah. And then the Cubs World Series. Funeral of Gamal Abdel Nasser, 5 million. Rob, I'm, yeah, definitely but butchering all these names. Rod Stewart concert in Brazil, 1994, had 3.5 million. And then everything Jesus. else is like more pilgrimages. And then there's an anti war march in Rome. So, all right, then. You get the Pope and Rod Stewart and the Cubs all together yep. here on a list. Yep. Together at last. <laughs> <laughs>